Hey everybody, this is David at Barnyard Bees. Okay, what I want to talk about, and I'm going to try to keep it completely simple for the new beekeeper. I'm not going to make it complex. Uh, what I'm talking about, and I wanted to wait to it begin before I start talking about, it's the dearth. Now, what is dearth? Dearth doesn't always pertain, or it don't only pertain in beekeeping. It can pertain to anything. Dearth means the lack of, inefficiency of, uh, inadequate supply. That's all it means. That's dearth. That's a definition of the word dearth. So when in beekeeping, when they talk about we're in dearth, the lack of, we're in lack of pollen and nectar. What the bees need to sustain themselves and to build up their supplies, and that's what it means. Now, how can you tell when you're in that time? It's very simple, and there's a few things that you can do to test your bees to see how if you're in the dearth, the lack of nectar and pollen. Now here's a fine example right here. These bees haven't touched this pollen since the red maple bloom in February, but now they are. So what's that tell you? That just, it's simple as that. It tells you that there's an inadequate supply of pollen in the area. If there was real pollen out there and enough of it, they would be on to it immediately. I noticed them starting to come to it about a week ago, very, very, just a few bees here and there. So I went down to our store yesterday and got a big bucket of pollen, filled the feeder up, and, and that's what we did. And, and just to break subject just for a second, I just wanted to uh, tell everybody uh, this is absolute our last week for the year 2019 of having packages. This is it. So I believe, I believe they're still on sale at the website. You have to check and see. I'm pretty sure, but I'm not 100% sure if they are if we're sold out. But if, if, if they are for sale, this is your absolute chance, last chance, to get package bees for 2019. We're not, we're not going any further with them. Uh, we don't have enough faith in the post office, the postal service, to get them there in an inadequate amount of time. And as hot as it's been, they're going to end up with dead bees, and we're not going to do it. So we're going to stop right here. This will be our last. We will ship queens, and we do ship queens all over the country, anywhere except Alaska and Hawaii. Then again, Alaska and Hawaii, I apologize. We can't because the postal service is just not efficient enough to get them there. Uh, and and they, the bees can't be set out on, on the docks waiting on, on somebody to decide to go ahead and uh, send them now because we, we like I said we always do our part and send them out immediately but it's not like that with the postal service sometimes they can sit there a couple days which is really really bad so so back to our subject let's get back to the the bees now it's it's simple as that and I'll, I'll show you a little test here I have a little bit of honey right here and what I'm gonna do and just dab it across the entrance of one of the hives. Now, if, if they have their own source that they're getting, they won't touch it. Whoa, got more than I wanted. <laughs> okay, now here's, here's an example right here. Immediately, they went to it. I couldn't see because of the shadow how much I was squirting on there. <laughs> but look, now, if there had been a good nectar flow on, they'd ignored it and they'd have went right by it. You wouldn't think bees would ignore honey, but once they have a mindset of what they're going after, they will completely ignore anything you put in front of them like that. And, uh, but immediately they're going after it. So that's one sign, that's one test that you can always do. Now, there's different stages of, of dearth. And a dearth can come and go. Uh, we're in drought here. We haven't had a good rain in about three weeks, at least three weeks. So it's put us in a temporary dearth. And the majority of the nectar flow is over anyway. Here in North Georgia, the flow is at peak mid-April, mid to late April is at peak, and, and it holds that level for a long time, all the way through into May and then towards the end 
second week of May, it'll start going down a little bit, not much. And then it'll start dwindling down, dwindling down. And then by, by June, the bees are looking. They're starting to look for sources of food. And so what you need to do in situations like that, in my opinion, it's good to go ahead and pour your, your honey supers. Go ahead and extract your honey then because you're not going to have much really from, from here on out to, to make any difference. And then you got to think about the bees building up their own supply anyway for the, you know, because they still have what little bit they'll get the rest of the, the summer. And of course the goldenrod in the fall. So what I would advise is now here in North Georgia, uh, we, we don't, we run singles right through the winter, single brood bodies. We don't, I don't, I don't run a, a super on top. Uh, it's, it's not necessary. We run five frame nukes through the winter, so why would we put a super on top? So what I plan on doing is pulling all the supers on top and extracting all that honey. And then I might put one back on to let them uh refill a little bit extra um and, and then i might might not leave it over the winter you don't have to not here in north georgia now different different parts of the country different story i understand that so just in our climate zone seven we don't we're not required to so so the reason that, that i advised to pour your honey now if you want to keep them on there a little bit longer okay that's okay but we're in the business of making bees so just to wait around and sit and wait around for more for another small nectar flow to come around is not worth it to us because we have bees to grow that we're continuing to grow we got nukes that we still got to sell we got to get these things built up so we're going to continue to feed sugar water now the here's the reason that i go ahead and pull my supers now at least in this yard where we open feed, we will start open feeding sugar water. And I do not want sugar water in my honey. None whatsoever. So I'll pull those supers and I'll be done with it. I won't consume any more of that. That'll be just for customer and family and whatever. Them that are bigger bee yards, we don't feed sugar water. Anyway, that we got spaced out uh, on different properties that we pull. A little bit. We don't do a whole lot of honey. Uh, very little. I don't. I'm not into it for the honey. So re remember that dearth is, is at different stages, but it's 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 not complex. Just if you're if you're in it to grow bees, and you do have some honey that you're collecting too, go ahead and pull that honey. Start feeding sugar water. And what I advise, and I get a backlash from people saying it causes diseases and such. Ah, eh, that's not true. Uh, open feeding about 300 feet about a football foot field away with some bucket feeders we use the five gallon buckets and uh before they start commenting about spreading diseases and stuff look it, it, your bees in dearth <laughs> i can promise you they're gonna go look somewhere for food they're gonna go to the local dumpster if you have restaurants around they're gonna swamp in in their dumpsters or people's backyards anything anywhere there's sugar water they, they're gonna find it somewhere so it's safer, in my opinion, to offer your bees your food that you're giving them. It's common sense. And, uh, I mean, the, the people saying it's going to spread diseases and such, think about that. Those bees are going to go somewhere, and they're going to eat. Now, the reason we don't do the hive top feeder then, we love the hive top feeder. They, they work excellent here. In our situation, we're running nukes here some weeks, some strong. And, you know, we may have a two-frame mini nuke right here that has very few brood inside and very weak hive. Well, come to earth, those big monsters over there find that little bitty hive right there. They're going to destroy it. I don't care how much of an insurance reducer you put on it. If you put one the size of your pinky, those bees will overwhelm that and they will get in there and they will get it. Now, I do I advise entrance reducers because it can save you a robin situation but i've even seen i've even seen them reduced down to the teeny tiny hole and they still get in there 
because they just overwhelm the hive that, that's so small. If, if the hive don't have a little bit of strength to it, it can't protect it regardless of how big the entrance is. So always remember that. Keep your, your hives at a certain, a certain strength strong enough to fight off at least to have a few in there that, that can fight off um, the bees coming in, in in normal situations. We're not normal situations here because we're raising bees. We're always taking risk. We always have bees that are weaker than others. Uh, the colony's weaker than others because we're, we're growing queens. We're pulling queens, um, selling nukes, and they end up being weaker and it, it can't be helped you can't start off with a strong colony when when you intend on selling that colony so the, everything starts out weak now uh not everyone's in our situation not everyone runs this many colonies and this is just one of our yards we have another big yard in jimmy's yard that's this size and several other smaller ones and some honey producers and just they're spread out but but to get back to the dearth, just just watch out for uh, situations like that, and protect your bees. Go ahead and get your insurance reducers on them for sure, and start offering pollen. Uh, they will they will keep your bees healthy and strong. And if you if you do open feed, put it uh, three hundred feet away. We have our yard, ours right down there. So about 300 feet away is ideal. You can go a little bit further. Pollen feeder can be right in the yard. It doesn't make a difference. They do not. Now you can, and I'll show a video later on. They're, they're, very, they're very calm when you look at this right here. They're not aggressive, but w w when they're going after sugar water, it's a whole different story. The bees are going at it aggressively, and they will, if you have it close, it can put them in a robin frenzy, and they can attack your bee yard in the younger colonies, the smaller colonies. So, offer them pollen. You can put it right in your yard. It don't make a difference. If you open feed, put it a long distance away. We don't hive top feed during the dearth. is because the bees, and some will say, well, feed them at night. Eh, doesn't matter. And I'll tell you why it doesn't matter, because the bees can smell. <laughs> you can't fool those bees that there's no sugar water in there. I don't care if they, if you saw, they saw you doing it or not. Uh, those bees have noses, <laughs> and their, their senses are extremely strong. And if your feeder has any kind of ventilation, which it has to have ventilation, they're going to smell that sugar water. I've been through this. I know how they do. They will, they, will, uh, they will smell it, they will test that hive out, the strength of it, and if they think they can go in there and wreck it, they will. Now, I, I got a lot of these right here that need reducers. Look at these little minis. And uh, so I'm gonna have to get, get busy and get reducers put on those. And even uh, right here, the mediums, they don't have any reducers on them, so I gotta get these. Uh, uh, little reducers now what we like to use and i'll just throw out a i've talked about this before take take you some uh hardware cloth and let's show you one right here i showed this in other videos but just to remind people and just in case no one's seen them take this uh take your hardware cloth these work great year round uh cut it about two inches wide in the length of your hive you can use these on five frames two frames eight frames ten frames it doesn't matter and cut slits all the way across it and then this is loose it needs stapled down and then open what which ones which doors you want and what i recommend is put a little teeny tiny one i mean teeny tiny on this side in in a case that you would have robin situation and you can go and close every one of them except the little tiny one now this gives you 100% ventilation all through the summer. And then in the winter time, all you gotta do is from the inside, put you in, your entrance, your, your wood entrance reducer right up against it from the inside with, with the hole, uh, you know, wherever you wanna put it. If you make your reducers or whatever and slide it from the inside. 
And then in the, uh, come spring, all you gotta do is pull that wooden entrance, entrance reducer back out from the inside and that's it. But it's, it's very simple. Okay, one more thing I wanted to talk about was it's June now. So what I recommend doing is start treating for mites. You need to at least treat once in June, this is what I recommend, to keep your bees going healthy and disease free all through the summer. So treat at least once in June, July, August, September, once a month. And then in the fall, I recommend that you do a, a three week in a row mite treatment. And preferably, if you can time it, which is hard to time, but roundabout area when your first frost is, from there back, three weeks. So three weeks prior to your last frost. I mean, I know that's impossible to guess, but ideal, that's ideal what you want to do. So because you have a good frost, it'll, it'll kill the mites off. And then the bees foraging after that will not pick up as mites near as bad. And you also want to treat while your bees are still active, while they're still getting active. So wherever you're at in the country, it's hard to say that from state to state. So that's what I recommend. You'll do a three, you'll eradicate the problem in the fall and your bees will go through winter with zero mite count or pretty close to zero mite count. Should be really close. You're doing three weeks in a row and what you're doing, you're breaking that mite cycle. By doing, we treat with oxalic acid. I'll put a video in the top right hand corner, uh, one of our previous videos that shows how to treat. So check that out. Don't forget. Uh, now, uh, it, it keeps mite spread disease. So you want to try to keep your bees mite free because your bees will be healthier, stronger, and that's what, that's what you're shooting for. So that's about it. Don't forget uh, barnyardbees.com for uh, for bee keeping supplies and queens all the way up through the fall. So and bee keeping supplies year round. So uh, don't forget about us, barnyardbees.com, and don't forget to click on the little bell, like and subscribe, and thanks for watching, Barnyard Bees.